Hello everyone, welcome to the Beginner's Guide to Jungle. Uh, this is your host, Professor Reha. I've been out for the past uh, week or so because of a really severe and grotesque head cold, so I apologize for that. But we're back. Uh, if I sound a little off, that's why I'm, I'm I'm over it, but I've got leftover conge um, leftover condition, leftover mucus in my sinuses, so that's what you're hearing there. I might cough a little bit every once in a while, <coughs> just like that, pardon me, but we're fine. So beyond that uh, oddity, uh, let's talk about jungle. Now, support is the most, I always, let me, let me put it actually this way, I always say support is the most difficult to play because it relies the most heavily on its allies, and the quality of your allies decides almost completely how your experience in the role is going to be, right? So I've always said support is the most difficult role to play, just for that reason. Jungle is the most complicated. In the first about half of the game, in the early to mid-game stages, you're looking to farm in the jungle and get ganks when the opportunity arises, if it does. In the second half of the game, you're looking to take out the enemy squishies, the ADC and the mid. <coughs> so, it comes down... The second half of the game, you're not really relying quite so much on your allies, as long as your front line is doing their job, you can slip around and eliminate the uh, weaker backline, which is what you're supposed to do. But in the early game, you are also, again, well, you're not really relying on your allies, you're more reacting to their performance, which isn't quite the same as relying on them. If a lane is doing badly, you go over there and you gank it. If a lane is doing well, you don't need to gank it. It's basically that simple. Maybe you'll, you will eventually and inevitably, you will have games where none of your lanes need ganking because they're all doing really well. And then you're going to have, more often than not, which is usually what happens, multiple lanes just in need of ganking. It happens, right? Oh, I haven't updated this in a hot minute. Okay. So we're going to go for... Hmm. Could go for a early Jotun's Wrath. Hmm. Probably the best idea. No, I don't think we need this. I think we need Aegis. So you're going to start at the speed, and then you're going to hit the right Harpy Camp, and then the left one, because that's actually going to bring you closer to mid lane. I probably should buy potions while I'm thinking about it. Alright. That's fine. So, like I said, you're going to go here, and then you're going to go, if you look at the map, right over to this one. Because coming around here, you can just turn this corner really quick. It takes one extra second here, and then go here, and then go up to here. Which is faster than going up here, taking two extra seconds to go here, and then, well, one extra second to go here, and then a couple extra seconds to go over there. Which is a completely different story. It took me slightly longer than I would have ideally wanted it, but that's fine. We're not going to use our ability on this group here because they're just a couple of auto attacks away from complete decimation. There we go. And here we are. Oh, they already took this. Interesting. Oh, let's go see. Sorry, he just went for the turret first. All right, quick clear. There's the turret gone. I think he did hit me with that, which is fine. This is ups, so that's good. Excellent. Okay. Good, I needed the mana a little bit. That also means likely I'm not gonna, that means very likely I won't need to gank right lane. Because if she was able to take that, that means she was able to win the first boxing match in lane. So, in all probability, yeah, I can see where she's not really in need of the help. Left lane could probably do with some help, so I'm going to go over there and take the um, oracles. And then we're going to see how they're doing in left lane after that. Okay. 
through this. Yeah, it looks like we can get a nice gank going on here. Butt bag is pushed up really nicely in mid. These people are doing okay. Now they... They're not here. That's fine. They were able to pick up a kill. Now I'm going to go over to mid lane here. See what's popping around over here. I'm just impressed Athena didn't die in that. I thought for sure she was going to. Is this up? Bot pack doesn't need... Oh, yeah, it is. Okay, good. So that's a big steal. Looks like Vulcan also doesn't have a whole lot of mana left, which is nice. Oh, the day, Zerg. Oh, I missed that. Oh, shoot. If I hadn't missed that, he would. I would have at least taken Vulcan with me. That's a shame. That's a shame. He had, he had some nice jukes, though. Grab these. Ah, well. Not crippling. It'll put uh, Hunbots a little bit ahead of me. Is she gonna... Yeah, she's gonna need a gank in right lane because she's got no mana. Too bad that last auto attack didn't hit earlier. Alright. Now we're gonna go ahead and clear this first because what I want to do is go to the right afterwards. Alright. Oh, looks like they backed off. Alright, so while I'm waiting to see what develops, there's Vulcan. I have to cover mid for bot bag because she's not there. Alright. Left doesn't need me right now. Emdal just went back. Alright. We actually have an opportunity here. I always miss that, but I didn't need to worry about it this time. Oh, hello. Good play, good play. He went right on top of that. That's fine, that's fine. I was able to get Vulcan, which is going to put Bot Bag in a really good position. I am going to sell these, though. I forgot to put down my wards, but that's fine. My next item should probably be Soul Eater, to be honest. Get some nice sustain in there, unless I go for... Uh, could go for Hydra's Lament. I also kind of want Transcendence for the power. They should be fine in mid. Athena's there. I'm gonna clear this. There we go. Now I want my Oracles. <clears throat> more, to, more to stall out myself and see what's going on here. we go. Alright. Yeah, we have a good... Uh, okay. I had a, I have a good ganking opportunity in mid that I want to take advantage of as quickly as possible, though. Why I'm not tanking this, I'll never know. There we go. That's yeah, fine. I want to know where Vulcan is. Where's Vulcan? Wow. Yeah. Geb did a really good job blocking that one. Sorry, Geb, you're a little late on that one. Thanks for the lift, though. Okay, they're clearing, yeah, damage with no problem. Perfect. How's Mulan doing? She's okay for now. He's too far in his own lane to... Too far back in his own lane to gank with. So we're not really going to be looking for that. Maybe Heimdall? 
Reduce is pretty pushed up. Not sure why Athena's picking a fight there. But apparently we're going on this. Okay. Cow, that was close. Oh no. Oh no. I didn't need that. Um. Oh, he just blinked that. Mm. Thanks, Skip. Did you just blink on me? Okay. I can't believe I got out of that. I'm going to keep running. I have no idea where Hinbots is. That was intense. The Athena did a fantastic job saving my life there. Early game Sona guy, huh? Bold purchase, but I like it. Yeah, we're going to need more power for this. Transcendence is going to be what I need. I need the mana. I need the power. I need to stay hungry and devour. it up. Thank you. Okay. Slap. Okay. Looks like Mulan doesn't have the mana here. She doesn't need me, though. Or does she? No, she's backing. I'll take this opportunity to grab this, then. Oh, Hunbots was ganking left. That's fine. Nothing really I could do about that. That's going to happen is where you're just not going to have any kind of opportunity to respond. I have my ult. I wonder if I can counter gank Medusa. Yep, because she's absolutely insane. That's what I'm talking about. And now we gotta leave. Okay. Now I gotta get out of here. Are they actually still fighting? Yeah, they are. I don't want anything to do with that right now, though. The Athena is amazing. Heal up off of these harpies. Easy. That's not going to be up in time. I need to go back and start working on my stacks. Alright. Now my next move I'm going to want is probably going to be the crusher. <laughs> <coughs> Pardon me. I need to remember that I have wards too. What are they doing in mid? Oh my goodness. There we go. Oh, this is the second time. They're just a damage. Okay, I'm gonna have to keep an eye on Heimdall there. This is easy take. Good. Grab these harpies. For more stacks. Help move on with her mana buff. Okay. Mm, 
Not even a problem. Oh, hold on. Did not expect that move. Did he blink or did he just roll in from wherever? I'm not sure. I gotta get out of here and heal, though. That was interesting. If I was a little more aggressive, I might have been able to get the uh, Hunbots, but I wasn't really r willing to risk that. I'm precariously keeping up with him. It's the thing I wanted to risk there. Oh, wait. Pick up my speed buff on their way by. Probably visit Mulan because I know Geb is over there. Did I say left? I meant right. Could have swore I said right. Nah, she'll be fine for now. Geb left. I don't know where Geb went, which is a problem. Oh, here we go. Nope. I thought Geb was going to be there, but no. I want these harpies. There we go. This should be okay. There's Geb. Okay, now I'm in trouble. Thank you. I cannot believe that worked. No! Ugh. Oh well. Oh well. It happens, it happens. Alright, so I'm going to get the Crusher next. I want Soul Eater, and then afterwards... Do I really need Soul Eater? No, I probably don't. Well, Soul Eater is 10% penetration. The other 10% penetration I would get from Boomba's Spear. Hmm. That would be an overcap on cooldown, though, so I'm not necessarily sure that's worth it. Ah, uh, that's a good question. Yeah, I'll probably skip on that. Uh, I might go for something a little bit heavier on the penetration. Maybe Titan's Bane. Titan's Bane is pretty good. Could go for Heartseeker. Could go for all kinds of things, actually. Oh, I have an idea, actually. A really excellent idea. And then I'm going to surprise you all. Yeah. Team comp permits. Alright. Okay. No! Ah, I was trying to ult out of there, but the wall was in the way. Ah, that was unfortunate. What has she got? Ah, see? The Crusher. Alright. Mm. That was a good play, but now they have no front line. That's bad. Ooh. That was close. I'm gonna have to just run in there and really quickly join the fight. I keep forgetting to put down my wards. Normally, when you're a, a jungler, you do want to ward pretty consistently. I've been forgetting to, shamefully. Um, but you really should be warding fairly decently heavily. 
Now, when you ward as a jungler, you're actually not going to ward a lot of the same places as a lot of the laning players are. <coughs> you're actually going to be looking for places that receive a lot of traffic to give, like, advanced warning. For example, uh, this ward here is a really great place as one example. I'm actually going to ward the other side equivalent. Just like that. And he didn't take the harpies for whatever reason. There we go. Hit nice and hard. <coughs> Where do we want to take this? Come on, Athena. You're the you're the support. You make this choice. All right, we're going right for it. Okay. Nice. Yeah, that's a good idea. They're not going to be attacking right now. Oh, she's going over to help Heimdall. Very nice. Timed that beautifully. One less opponent that can stop us. Oh, yeah, we should probably join that fight. <coughs> Ooh. <coughs> that was quite the cough. I feel a lot better now for it, though. Let's see if we can save some lives. Again, you're an assassin. You want to slip around the back here. Didn't wind up being needed, but that's fine. Holy cow, that's some smooth movement. He thinks I'm chasing him, but I'm really not. <clears throat> what? Why not? I mean, we can take their jungle instead, that's fine, but... I think we should have taken the fire giant while we had the opportunity. Fire giant's just more useful. Come on. Why? We had an opportunity. <coughs> hmm. She's still playing around with that. And I can get my speed buff. Do you have a gank opportunity on Vulcan here? Oh, we're. Never mind. <coughs> Just noticed that Athena got absolutely gobsmacked. That the situation is not developing any better for Mulan. Okay, we're gonna come around from behind here. Come here. There we go. Very nice. I'm not sure who he was trying to pull there. You gotta stop Medusa. No, you don't, little danger noodle. There you are. Okay. There we go. 
Extraordinary Wait a minute, I can actually heal off of jungle camps. So why not do so? Never mind. There aren't any jungle camps to heal off of. That could be a problem. Yeah, I'm trying to find something to heal off of. Here we go. <coughs> Alright. This'll work. Beautiful. And then we can heal off of these. Although what I really should be doing is getting going back and getting my penetration. I can clear this if you need. Alright. Go back at my pen. And then... I want high to the urchin. It'll still give me a little bit of power because of transcendence, but a lot of... For most assassins, you do want at least some form of protections. I'm getting high to the urchin because it'll give me a little bit of both. So... <coughs> Because that's really going to help you survive against a lot of the usual opponents. Actually, while I have the 900, I should probably go back really quick. Heimdall isn't particularly in danger. I need to start stacking this as quickly as possible. Bit of a risk building this so late, but I think it'll work out. I just need to make sure I get to the fight in time. It's going to be a near call. Mulan's diving pretty deep into that enemy fight, uh, enemy team. Okay, that's Medusa gone, so I'm going to want to be looking for Vulcan. There he is. They're already on him, so I actually will probably... Uh, hello. I probably shouldn't be here. There we go. Hmm. Before I kill him. Wait a minute, I can heal off of these. We're fine. They can't catch me. Well, he can. Nice. And now I gotta get out of here. Heal up again. There we go. It's a start. I can't take on Medusa. I already know that. I might be able to heal up, but I can't heal up that much. Okay, bye. Break line of sight. Stop these guys a little bit. Go, this will work. Nice. Now the question is, where is the enemy compared to my allies? A ward just died. Nice. All right. That was a good attempt. What are you looking to get back to uh, Vulcan and Medusa back there? I can't believe I let that hit me, but okay. Hello. Shoot. Bye. Ah, he was really focusing me down. Which is interesting. It's unusual for the assassin to be focused down that hard. It sometimes happens if they're trying to protect their backline really hard. I mean, Vulcan and Medusa don't have a whole lot of options to get away from me. 
Well, Medusa does. Medusa has her really nice dash there, but Vulcan has almost no ways of getting away from Robin. Even with my regular slow, I can easily catch back up to him, so I can see definitely why they would be very concerned about that. It's one of the reasons why he's been doing so badly, is because I can just stick to him very nicely. Yeah, but good old Unbots has a lot of similar options for Botbag. She's just got the advantage of the Book of the Dead. Oh, uh, Vulcan just finished his, which is fair. I need to pick up my speed buff. Alright. Once I finish my stacks on my Hide of the Urchin, that'll stack with the passive of Robins, which will give me a lot of bonus health. That's all I really need. Also, notice my power. 344. Decreasing slowly because the effect is wearing off. But I'm able to maintain a pretty consistent 300 and... That was clean. That was clean. Don't mess with Robin. Punk. This just goes to show that you can build a defensive item on an assassin and still maintain your power output if you know what you're doing. Most assassins, and I see this a lot, a lot of assassins go pure power. He's going with a hybrid item, but don't be afraid of going for a full defense item. It can make a big difference. Because a lot of people under... He's actually building the correct amount of penetration, so is Medusa, but Vulcan does not. So that's one damage dealer done. What I need is... Where is Vulcan? Vulcan just died. That's fine. There we go. He did it again. He tried it again. Not today, Zerg. I need these minions. Perfect. Alright, good. Alright. That serves as a rough overview. Now, you'll notice I didn't really talk in broad uh, strokes here for a lot of this. There were some broad tips that I could give. But you'll notice a lot of the time I was simply narrating what I was doing and why. I was talking about whether or not a gank was good. <coughs> I was talking about whether or not somebody needed a gank, or if a gank would have just been nice to, you know, if it was just a convenient gank, or if it was a needed gank. That's because a lot of jungle gameplay is going to be very distinct like that, okay? There's not... With the, once you get to mid lane after your first three cleared camps, after you clear the speed, after you clear the two harpy camps in the right jungle, you're going to mid lane, and at that point your game stops being formulaic. A lot of the, actually pretty much every other role has a pretty set pattern. Support is a little bit different because support can change when they go to mid lane, how often they bounce between ADC and mid lanes. You know, they, they have a couple of, uh, they have a bit of variability there. But in the first half of the game for junglers, once you hit that mid lane, it's all 100% a unique experience when you go for this camp or that camp when you go for a gank or not what's motivating you to get a uh, jungle camp is it the experience in gold is it healing because you've got boombas uh dagger or what have you or do you have boomba uh, the the other one there that i can't remember off the top of my head uh do you have that instead <coughs> it's it's not formulaic it's a very unique individual series of events. You have to make your own decisions throughout the game. There's no real predictability there. I know there is a quote-unquote pattern that exists for every conquest map that junglers like to try to follow. Jungling mains like to try to follow. Personally, 
I've never followed that, except for once, which was a terrible game for me. I don't usually follow that. Let me put that more accurately. I don't usually follow that quote-unquote map because it's too formulaic. It doesn't really give you a lot of leeway to react to one lane doing particularly badly, nor does it really make allowances for one lane of yours doing particularly well. It just assumes that somebody at this point is going to need a gank at that particular point because the enemy jungler should be there. But a lot of junglers don't follow the map anyways, so it's pretty difficult to predict at any one time what the enemy jungler is doing anyways. So, ultimately, I wasn't able to give a lot of really specific... I wasn't able to give a lot of, you know, general, broad, far-reaching statements on jungling because you're going to find as you play jungle, that these kinds of broad, sweeping statements about jungling are horrifically inaccurate most of the time. One that I do want to really stress, though, is don't be afraid of building a little bit of protections. This seems like it would really slow down your power output, your ability to deal damage, and your ability to impact people. But a lot of your primary targets as an assassin are the damage dealers. You're not usually too concerned with the warrior or the support, as an assassin, because those aren't your targets. Your targets are the ADC and the mid, most of the time. The enemy jungler, if you have a spare moment, or they're convenient, which, you know, happened when I killed Hunbots in the 1v1. He was there, I was there. I pretty much figured that if as long as I could dodge his ult, I could kill him, and I was absolutely correct. So, you know, that's your primary target. So, since those are your primary targets, you need to build at least some defense. Now, the Hunbots was working on a hybrid physical. This would have been an okay pickup here. We had three physical on the team, myself, Mulan, and Heimdall. But it wasn't going to be enough. It wasn't going to help him against Baba Yaga, who was absolutely killing it. It wasn't going to help him against Athena, who actually does decent amounts of damage as a support. It wasn't going to help him against either of those two. So, it was a step in the right direction, but it wasn't enough, in my opinion. But, that's something I think a lot more junglers should be aware of, is that just one pure defense item can really stretch a long way for you. And don't underestimate that, okay? As long as you are very careful about your build, you can slot in a pure defensive item and not get any, well, ostensibly not get any power. I got a little bit out of Hide of the Urchin because of the evolved transcendence. I think I got like six or... Seven, I think it's seven power out of the uh, Hide of the Urchin. <coughs> Pardon me. Anyways, just slap in a defensive item. Now, I used Hide of the Urchin here because they had three physical, two magic. The default physical protections of assassins are naturally a little bit higher. I had a good 122 physical protections, 119 magic protections, but that was boosted by Athena's Heart Ward anyways, so that's a little bit inflated. But I still had, you'll notice I still had 332 power on average. Now, part of that is the passive from Boomba's Spear giving me a really nice extra power, 10% power buff whenever I kill a jungle camp, but that's all you really need, right? So, yeah, don't don't be afraid as a jungle, if you're going to become a jungler main, don't be afraid of building N, A, single protection item. I recommend one of the, in most situations, I'll usually go for a cloak. Maybe it's Mantle of Discord, maybe it's Hide of the Urchin, maybe it's one of the other ones. I don't usually go so hard on the hybrid items like the shields or something like Ansley or the Runic Shield unless the enemy team composition is such that either they're heavier on the tankiness and not quite as hard on the damage output or I just really want the little combination of power and protections, in which case I'll build two hybrid items. But when you're building protections, you either want two hybrid items, one for each type of protection, physical and magical, or you build one item that's going to get you both, which is what I did with Hide of the Urchin. Right? Now, I picked Hide of the Urchin not only because I could squeeze out seven or so power with Transcendence, but because it gave me extra health, which helped Ravin's passive, and, well, Ravon's passive, and provides another health shield on top of Ravon's passive health shield that he gets whenever he slaps people, right? So, that's ultimately why I picked High to the Urchin in this particular scenario, but it, it makes a difference. And that's one 
of the few sweeping statements about jungling I will make that you really I, that I'm really hoping you take away from this. A protection item or two isn't going to kill you. It's going to keep you alive so you can kill others. Right? So with that being said, um, thank you all very much for joining me. Thank you all very much for um, watching this. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, ideas, suggestions, or requests, please leave them down in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, if you like this, please like and subscribe and have a great 24 hours.